What's going on guys, Nate Dog here, bringing you my build for the Elder Scrolls Online Scalebreaker patch, The Rogue. The Rogue is a Nightblade DPS aimed for group dungeons. So, without further ado, let's dive into this build. Going over into my character sheet. Max Magicka is sitting at 12k, Max Health at 21k, Max Stanima at 25k, Magicka Recovery at 600, Health recovery at 200, stamina recovery at 1,700. Spell damage is sitting at 1,500. Weapon damage on my bow bar is sitting at 3,400 with a weapon critical of 56.6%. Over on to my dual wield. You can see my max magicka increases to 13k. Well, the spell damage is at 1,800, weapon damage at 3,700 with a weapon critical of only 43.6%. Both spell and physical resistance sitting at 14k. Now buffing up my guy. As you can see, my stamina recovery goes to 1,900. Weapon damage goes up to 4,400 with a weapon critical at 53.6%. The bow, weapon damage goes up to 4,000. Over into attributes, I placed 10 points into health. The reason I did this was I was finding it in dungeons. It was a little bit harder to survive them. So by having a little bit more health, it made it a lot easier. I went 54 points into Stanima because this is a Stanima DPS build. So it was essential to have all the rest of my points put into Stanima to help sustain my abilities. Going over into active effects, I am a vampire reason I went to Vampire on this build was to help with the stamina recovery and also several other passives was on death which reduces the damage done to me by 33% under 50% health something I could pass off. The food that I'm running is Dubious Cameron Throne which is actually a drink which increases stamina recovery by 200, max stamina by 2500 and max health by 2700. A better food to sustain for this one would be Aptherian. The reason why is because it actually gives us health recovery back for it. We do have two boons. The first one is the Shadow, increasing our critical damage done by 19%. And the Warrior, which increases our weapon damage by 362. Over into the gear that we are having. The potions I'm running is Essence of Weapon Power. The reason I'm running this is Grant. Major Brutality, increasing weapon damage by 20%. Gives us Major Savagery, which gives us 2,100 weapon critical. And restores 7,500 stamina. And gives us Major Endurance, which, which increases our stamina recovery by 20%. Over to weapons. In my weapons, all my weapons have the enchantment, absorbed stamina enchantment. The reason for this was... We are running a lot of stamina. It makes it a lot easier to sustain if we have stamina coming back to us as we're doing hits. All of them also have their Nern Hone trait on it, which increases 
weapon damage by 15%. DPS needs the damage done. The bow is part of the Hunting of Rage set, which two pieces gives us weapon critical by 800. Three items gives us 1000 max stamina. Four items, 800 weapon critical again. And five pieces gives us 280 weapon damage. Like I said before, Absorb Stamina Enchantment, Nern Hone Trait, this is part of the Hunting Range set. Same with the other sword. Same thing. Over into Apparel, we are running five medium, one heavy, one light. All my large armor, which by what I mean large armor, that would be head, chest, and legs, have the max health enchantment on it. And all my smaller pieces, which would be the shoulders, waist, hands, and feet, will be running max magicka because we do have one magicka ability and we have no resources giving us magicka back, so we need a little bit bigger magicka pool. All of the armor is has divine traits on them because we have two Munda stones. It was more beneficial to run divines on them to increase both Munda stones. So the head is medium armor, part of the Twice Born Star set. Twice Born Star set gives Twice Born Star set gives us 1,200 max health, 1,000 max stamina, 1,000 max magicka, and this allows us to have two Munda stones at the same time. Our chest is medium armor, again, max health, enchantment, divine trait, Twice Born Star set. The shoulders is part of the Night Mother's Gaze set, and like I said earlier, max magicka, divine trait, Night Mother's Gaze set, we we'll only have two items in this set, which adds 833 weapon critical. Over to the waist, this is our light armor. Our shoulders was heavy. Again, part of the Night Mother's Gaze set, Max Magic Enchantment, Divine Straits. Hands is in medium armor, Twice Born Star set, Max Magic Enchantment, Divine Straits. Legs, medium armor, Twice Born Star set, Max Health Enchantment, Divine Traits. Feet is Medium Armor, Twice Born Star Set, Max Magic Enchantment, Divine Traits. Over in Accessories, as you can see, going scrolling through this, that none of my accessories are gold color, which this build still runs very well, even though the accessories are not gold color. All three of my accessories have the Weapon Damage Enchantment on it with Infused Trait to increase the effectiveness of the Jewelry Enchantment by 42%. As it goes into purple, it'll go 51%, and gold, it'll go higher, so we'll get more weapon damage as this, as this upgrades. Over into the skills. On my bow bar, first skill I have is Poison Injection. Poison enemy dealing 3k, almost 4k poison damage, an additional almost 15k poison damage over 10 seconds. Deal up to 100% more damage to enemies under 50% health. This is our executioner on the bow bar, which we end up firing this even when enemies are at full health. Our barrage is our next ability. This has a range of 28 meters, radius of 7 meters, lasts for 8 seconds, deals 1000 physical damage to enemies in the target area every one second for eight seconds. Our next ability is Dark Shade. This is our Magicka cost ability. Has a range of 28 meters, lasts for 18 seconds. Summon the Shade of ourselves to fight alongside us for 18 seconds. The Shade can slash and deal 2k Magicka damage and also an occasional Whirlwind to all enemies around it, dealing another 2k da Magicka damage. The shade also afflicts enemies with minor main, reducing the enemy's damage done by 15% for 4 seconds. Next ability we have is Relentless Focus. Lasts for 30 seconds. It reduces damage taken by 2% with every light and heavy attack up to 5 times, which that means is every time we deal a light or heavy attack within the duration, we can reduce the damage taken, up, taken by 2%, so 5 times 2, 10% less damage. Also with while well active hitting enemies with five light or heavy attacks we can convert this ability into an assassin's scourge which lets us fire a bow. 
for half the cost that deals 13, almost 14k disease damage and heals us for 33% of the damage done if we are standing within 7 meters of it of the enemy. Next ability we have is Camouflage Hunter. The only reason this ability is on our bar is to is mostly for the bottom passive here which while slotted gain major savagery increasing our weapon critical rating by 2100 and we also gain minor berserk for five seconds after dealing critical damage from the enemy's flank increasing our damage done by eight percent so you have to stand either on the left right or behind them in order to be getting with the critical damage applied to them to increase our damage down by 8%. Ultimate on our bull bar is Incapacitating Strikes with a cost of 70 ultimate. Very, very cheap ability to use. It deals 11k, almost 12k disease damage and causes them to take 20% more damage from our attacks for 6 seconds. If we cast it at 120 ultimate, the enemy is silenced for 3 seconds. Huge, huge thing to have. Well slotted, we gain Reaver, which restores 100 magicka and stamina when we deal damage with a light or heavy attack on an enemy that is affected with a negative effect on him. So, with our Dark Shade here, with it applying Minor Maid for 18 seconds, that lasts for 4 seconds on an enemy, if we're hitting that enemy with light and heavy attacks, We'll be getting our stamina and magicka back. So this helps us sustain our stamina and magicka costs on our abilities. Over into our other bar. On our back bar with the dual wield, we have first ability we have is surprise attack. Deals 8k physical damage. If we are flanking an enemy, we reduce their physical resistance by 5% for 10 seconds. If we are sneaking or invisible, we stun the enemies for 3 seconds. And set them off for and set them off balance for the three seconds next ability we have is blood craze which deals 2000 physical damage with each of our weapons causing them to bleed for an additional 16k physical damage over 10 seconds this also heals us for 1k health every two seconds for the duration so we get five ticks of healing applied back to us Next ability we have is Killer's Blade. Stab an enemy dealing 4k disease damage and deals 300% more damage to enemies below 25% health. This is our executioner on our This is our executioner on our dual wield bar. This also heals us for 4k almost 8k or I should say 4 it heals us for 4k almost 5k if the enemy dies within 2 seconds of being struck. Next ability we have is Leeching Strikes. This ca is cast on us, causing our light and heavy attacks to heal for 1,500 health and restore 100 stamina for 20 seconds. Fully, hard, fully charged heavy attacks restore twice the value. We also restore an additional 4k stamina when the effect ends or it's based on the length of time we have Leeching Strikes active. Last ability we, or second to last ability we have is Ambush. We flash through the shadows dealing 4k, almost 5k physical damage and afflicting enemies with minor vulnerability for 8 seconds, increasing their damage taken by 8%. This also grants empowerment, increasing the damage of our next light attack by 40%. Again, our ultimate is incapacitating strikes. It's a hard thing to pass up on the negatives that we apply the enemies to give up restoring magic and stamina back helps with sustaining over into passives we have for your class passives you want to get them all as you can see siphoning i do not have all the way up but you want to get this up and get all the passives in the tree then we go over the dual wielding again dual wielding is not all the way up but you want to get that very lot all the passives in the dual wielding tree same with the bow you want to get everything in the bow bar. All the passives in that tree. Armor. In the light armor tree, you want to get the top three. Which again, I don't have all the way up. I'm currently working on it because I started this guy out with just going all medium. But now since he's running a 5-1-1, 5 medium, 1 light, 1 heavy, you want to get all the passives in there. 
medium armor, get all the passives you can here, and with the heavy. Over into the world, we have vampire. In vampire tree, one of the passives we have is supernatural recovery. This is why our stamina recovery is really high. Another good passive to get is undeath. This is where reduced damage taken by 33% based on our missing health while we are below 50% health. This helps us stay alive pretty easy when we're below that range. Over into guilds, fighter's guild ability. Since we do have one fighter guild ability, we will want to get Slayer. Increases our weapon damage on our bow bar. Also, Banish the Wicked, you want to get this all the way up to generate ultimate every time you fight undead, Daedra, or werewolves. This includes vampires. This is huge. This helps a lot in dungeons. Skill Tracker. I want to probably unlock this one because this gives us more damage done when we're using those abilities. Mages Guild. We want to get Persuasive Will. This is for more so gameplay of the campaign. It helps us go through the campaign a little bit quicker if we have this. Undaunted. I'm currently working on my Undaunted skills, but you want to get these passes because these are huge. The first one is Undaunted Command. Activ activating allies synergies restore 2% of our max health, stamina, and magicka. This gives us a lot back. It'll go up to 4% in the next upgrade. Undaunted Metal increases max health, stamina, and magicka by 1% for each type of armor wearing. Since we're wearing one, at least one heavy, one medium, and one light, it gives us 3%. Next upgrade gives us six, so our health, our health, magic, and stamina would be a lot higher. Racials, you want to get everything in that. Over into crafting, get alchemy upgraded and get medicinal use. This is allows our potions to last for 30% longer. Very, very good passive to have. And with the passive, you know, with the passive 30% longer. Potions last, have a cooldown time of 45 seconds, and by having this, that's why my potions last at 47.5 seconds, so 100% uptime on that. And then over provisioning, based on what you have, if you have full food, you will want to get all this all the way up, increasing the duration by 20 minutes for the food, and you will want to get concierge if you have any drinks increase your drinks by 20 20 minutes this helps a lot that way you're not running burning through your foods and drinks so often thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one is that you Sidian? i don't know how you defeated those banekin but i'll be glad to send more it's the outsiders. So the keepers are afraid to face me. Very well. You'll die in their stead. I'm going to enjoy this. Oh.